Embrace the Strange, Today's Illusion is the wisher, sort of like the thinker, but, you know, illusionist style, so existential. I also kind of see in it, and it might be because I've gotten, like, way more immersed in tarot than I was before, but this gives me the King of Cups, like, there's something very dreamy and, like, romantic about it. Seated, the figure is almost crushed down by an invisible force, and is driven down and flat. Its legs extended out on both sides, its back to the onlooker as it cracks open. The chasm, the course of the body spine, its neck a stem with the petal or leaf for a head. Its eye holds two pupils, a third in the breast of the figure. It resists the pressure to fold, supporting its head in one hand and gripping the other in an effort to stay upright. Wishes take thought, even more careful than thinking, because wishes can often be scarce, or at least that's the idea behind the title. Wishing itself is work, and it takes effort, sort of like dreams are dreaming, at least to me. Not everyone dreams while they sleep, or dream as in aspire in life. It's not a thing that can be taught, like imagination. Sometimes it's a thing I struggle with. It's like an opportunity is presented, but I don't know what to do with it. Or if I truly want it, you know, it makes me question, am I the best person this could be offered to? Is that of pessimism? I don't know. With my art style, it's not like you can say that's a Muka woman in real life. My inspiration's all over the place. I can draw inspiration really from anything. And I have tried to limit my exposure to other artistic stimuli for that reason, but there are certain artists that really capture the look of a period, like um, Botticelli, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Pronunciation is not my thing, I'm sorry. I feel like <laughs> the past my history of like YouTube videos, I've probably said so many things wrong. Ugh. And you know, it's just like, I, I just, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing, existing. There are women that really look like, you know, Botticelli people, you know, the figures and the way that he depicted them. On a Naked and Afraid episode, there was a woman with a body like the woman in The Birth of Venus. And I know that's like a weird thing to notice, especially on like Naked and Afraid, but it was like her waist to hip ratio was like exact. And I was like, I feel like that's very uncommon now. Most modern people don't look like earlier people, especially, you know, with like the era of body augmentations. <laughs> You know, and unless they look exactly like an ancestor, like Native Americans, I feel like that's, you can see, like, 100% what people look like back in that time. Plus, Native Americans had some of the best side profiles, like, great noses. I love a good nose. Like, notable noses. Like, oh, I was, I <laughs> talk about noses. The model, Gemma Ward, beautiful nose. Another notable nose, Natalie Portman. When I found out she was Israeli, I'm like, oh. That's just like, she has like a perfect nose, but it's not like, like your standard, like ethnic nose that people always want to get rid of, but it's like perfectly, like look at, look at her nose. Even as a child, it was perfectly straight. It was, and I'm like the bridge, like the bridge, like the way it comes out down from her eyebrows is just like so, there's something very elegant about her nose. Donna Summer. I think she and Rico Nasty actually look very similar. And I know that Rico Nasty is biracial. But it's just like there's something there between the two of them like there's something about like their nose and their eyes but anyway if you take anything away from this video it is art truly art and art goes on so i will in my next video thank you for watching